Hello and welcome, Your Excellencies, Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, and of course to our viewers online. My name is Lisa Burke. It's a great pleasure to be your host today. It's lovely to see some people here in person and also to have our viewers on live stream. And of course, here we're at heralding the launch of ESRIC, the European Space Resources Innovation Center. Luxembourg has been at the forefront of driving thought leadership and business around the space industry and space resources to ultimately lead to an in-space economy. In the room, we have many interested parties and supporters, and online we're joined by experts and engaged and curious observers. So welcome to you all. We're hoping that together, ESRIC can grow to become an internationally recognized center of excellence. So to launch this event, please welcome to the stage, Franz Fayot, Minister of the Economy for Luxembourg. Thank you very much, uh, Lisa. Good morning, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests. I'm, I'm also happy to, to be at, at this event to see some people uh, in, in actual flesh and blood. It's uh, exceptional in, the, in these times. It's, um, it's a very um, nice event. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Two years after we set out with the idea to create a research and innovation center together with the European Space Agency and the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology in 2018. I am excited and proud to announce today the, the official launch of ASRIC, which will be hosted here in Luxembourg and will be yet another important stone in the construction of the very promising and already successful space resources sector. I would like to congratulate all the people at these different institutions we have worked so hard in the past years to make this project come true. The adventure now truly begins. ASRIC's goal will be to connect research, business development, business development, community and knowledge management in Europe. And I am convinced that ASRIC will be a leading European catalyst for innovation in space resources utilization. It will be able to benefit from ESA's institutional power and Luxembourg's strategic global position in this field. The creation of ASRIC is part of the Luxembourg government's uh, Space Resources LU initiative, which launched in 2016. And over the past six, four years, we set up a legal framework and a business environment, which today en enable Luxembourg to play its part in this inspiring long-term endeavor to build a sustainable space economy for the benefit of humankind. Mission-driven research and applications, best-in-class talent, and state-of-the-art facilities unique in Europe will be the uh, keys to the success of ASRIC. But of course, we cannot do this alone. And therefore, ASRIC will team up with uh, public and private international institutions, promoting open innovation in space resources for Europe in what I hope will become an interconnected ecosystem of international stakeholders. As well as undertaking space resources research, the center will also contribute to economic development. ASRIC will support commercial initiatives and startups, offer a business incubation component, and enable technology transfer between space and non-space industries. The ASRIC startup support program will encourage early stage startups to refine their business plan, attract their first customers, and secure their first investment. It will also offer startups access to office space and equipment to mature and further develop their products or services. The center will furthermore encourage industry and investors to team up to accelerate crucial technologies for Earth, enabling them to also be used in space resource activities. Strong commercial ideas will be able to count on a full range of support initiatives to optimize their success. ASRIC will be able to build on the range of programs and partnerships 
already established over the, past, over the last decades with academia, research, business, and space agencies to create expertise and skills required by the space sector. Alongside ESA, we plan to also develop our partnership with NASA. As you know, I very recently signed an agreement in the frame of the Artemis program on behalf of Luxembourg. And I am convinced that uh, ASTRIC will also play a key role in this cooperation, this inspiring cooperation with the American Space Agency, NASA. ASTRIC will be a unique com combination of competencies, capabilities, and disciplines driving open innovation in space resources with an international dimension. These open, integrated, and multidisciplinary ways of working will make this center so unique. I'm confident that it will give rise to scientific, technological, and entrepreneurial outcomes that truly have the potential to drive game-changing innovation in both space and non-space applications. The close cooperation knowledge and innovative approach of the founding members of ASTRIC will, I am sure, play a significant role in the development of an in-space resources economy in Europe. I wish ASTRIC all the best and a lot of success in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Fayo, and we do realize it's an incredibly busy time for all ministers across the world at the moment, so we also appreciate your time, Minister Mayak, she's also present here today. Now, most people in the room here will know all about space resources, but it's quite hard to visualize, to feel it sometimes. We have a fantastic video to show us a little bit more now. Enjoy. It takes just three days to reach the moon from Earth. And once there, less than two seconds for communications to make the journey home. On the moon, we have the natural resources needed to sustain a long-term human presence. All of this makes it the ideal base for missions further into space. Blasted by solar winds, extreme temperatures, and micrometeorites, the lunar surface is a hazardous environment. Robots and autonomous systems will be needed to help humans build a self-sustaining base. Fortunately, many of the raw materials required to construct this lasting human presence can be found on the moon itself. The location of the lunar base has been chosen for access to these essential materials. A promising area was identified by prospecting spacecraft and followed by robotic scouts dispatched to verify the quantity and quality of the resources. Lunar water can be collected by melting regolith or vaporizing ice known to exist in the permanent shadows of the moon's craters. Solar radiation directed by solar concentrators, heats the frozen ground so the valuable water, deposited there by comet impacts and preserved in the perpetual icy cold shadows, can be collected. The water is used for life support and irrigation of crops grown in greenhouses to feed lunar inhabitants. The elements that make up water are used to create lunar fuel cells and rocket propellant, drastically cutting the cost of onward missions into deep space, as well as creating viable markets for space resources products. Lunar regolith, the layer of dust and rock covering almost the entire surface of the moon, is used to construct and protect much of the moon base, including housing, roads, and landing pads. It contains many essential elements and can be refined to extract those needed to build and maintain the base. Solar panels, glass, metal tools, electronics, and building materials, such as lunar concrete. 
The moon is the logical next frontier, our stepping stone to the natural resources available on asteroids, Mars, and across the solar system. As well as reducing the cost and improving the viability of exploration missions, use of space resources will create major socioeconomic benefits for humankind in many areas of science and technology. Luxembourg is the center in Europe for space resources. We are working with the European Space Agency and international partners to encourage the scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs and lawyers to develop the framework and building blocks for the space resources value chain. Each of these building blocks will be crucial to make the utilization of space resources a reality. The pioneers of tomorrow's space industry are busy today anticipating the needs of a fair and sustainable space-based economy. The foundations of the first moon base may not be laid for another decade, but preparations are well underway. Soon, we will look up at the night sky and see ourselves looking back. It's always nice to get a little bit of inspiration from videos like that when we can't always make our own way to the moon or to know all of the science involved in space resources. Another very busy man joining us now on stage, Minister Claude Maish, who is Minister for Higher Education and Research. Thank you for your time also. Good morning. Everybody, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I acknowledge with great pleasure and uh, satisfaction that the European Space Resources Innovation Center has come true as a close partnership of the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology, the Luxembourg Space Agency and the European Space Agency. Hosting ESRIC within LISC is a recognition of the quality and impact of the research and innovation activities of LISC, the country's largest public research center, and it also allows ESRIC to become operational very quickly. ESRIC can start working by building upon the knowledge and the high quality expertise of LISC in the domain of space technologies, its world-class world infrastructure as well as its network of uh, cooperation partners. The competences and experience of LISC that have been built up during the last 20 years will be of great use to the establishment of ESRIC. With a strong commitment of LISC, I'm certain that ESRIC is well positioned to become an internationally recognized center of expertise related to the use of space resources. ESRIC, geogra ESRIC's geographical implementation in the larger area of Belval campus will facilitate the cooperation with other public research institutions, especially the University of Luxembourg. Geographical vicinity of uh, actors of research is one of the key factors for success of fruitful cooperation. In 2016, the OECD review of Luxembourg's innovation system calls for an improved and reinforced cooperation and coordination between the main ministries in charge of R&D with the objective of ensuring the efficient use of public investment in research and innovation, as well as managing and addressing the needs of an expanded, more differentiated and interlinked innovation system. I'm profoundly happy that the fruitful collaboration between my ministry and the Ministry of Economy has finally led to the establishment of ESRIC within the existing institutional framework of public research. Ladies and gentlemen, ESRIC not only perfectly fits into Space Resources Point LU initiative of the Luxembourg government, ESRIC will also become a trusted actor for the implementation of the national research strategy and research priorities. The government has decided one year ago 
one year ago, a new national research strategy with updated national research priorities. The aim of the research strategy is to ensure the right balance between reinforcing current strengths and developing the capacities for emergent areas where Luxembourg researchers can have a head start. It's also important to maintain the right balance between fundamental and applied research to guarantee long-term adaptability to current and future socioeconomic needs. From this perspective, ASRIC perfectly fits into the governmental strategy for research and can contribute to the, pri to the priority research areas. ASRIC, at the forefront of interdisciplinary approach in public research, as well as the transfer and use of research findings in priority areas, will contribute to fostering economic diversification in priority sectors, their office-based technologies. The strategic partnership between ASRIC and ESA opens up a further international perspective and will at the same time contribute to the national research actors to become a widely recognized location for research and innovation in Europe. ASRIC is a challenging and promising initiative. Let us keep joining all our forces to make it become a big success. Good luck to ASRIC. Thank you very much, Minister Maish. And now we have an exciting part. We're going to reveal the logo identity of Estric, a logo that hopefully we will all become more familiar with time. Also, just in case you haven't logged on, the estric.lu website is live and all of the social media links, so you can tweet away if you so wish. But here is the logo identity of Estric. Now, joining us on the line from Darmstadt, sadly not in person, is a very familiar face to anybody who knows about the European space industry. It is the Director General of ESA, Jan Werner. Welcome, Jan. Hello, welcome. Lovely to see you on screen here. Sadly, you're not here in person, but uh, we're very grateful for your time, and we, we are very delighted to have you with us, and uh, the floor is now yours. Thank you very much, Lisa. Dear Minister Fayot, dear Minister Maish, dear ladies and gentlemen, I must say I'm really happy that I can participate in the launch of European Space Resources Innovation Center, ESRIC, and coming back to the logo, yes, we want to power ESRIC. That's very clear. So space, space is an infrastructure today. Space is an infrastructure and an enabler. And if you have an infrastructure, you need also some logistics. And that means we need space logistics, including also usage of resources in this uh, infrastructure. But which are, which are the space resources? First of all, I think it's, it's very typical for Luxembourg to take care of this, because Luxembourg also in the past was always ready 
to really go to new approaches uh, if you look to the telecommunication sector just as one example and therefore i think it's typical for luxembourg to go for this approach and we as isa as i said we are ready to power and to support this ESWIC initiative and uh, ESA uh, has changed in its role. It's not only just an agency, it is now also a partner of industry, which is important for this aspect as well. It is a customer to industry, so we are buying services from industry. And we are also an enabler. We would like to provide our knowledge to who, who needs. And uh, finally, we are a broker, a broker meaning that we are ready to combine and uh, to have links to different actors in the public and the private sector. So that this is all what we are, can do, and uh, we are very strong in exploration. And you have heard about the Moon Village. Um, some people thought, and I have uh, really written uh, statements about that, neither, neither Moon nor Village, uh, but I have to say, future is closer than it may appear. Because also with this activity, with the resource utilization, we are coming closer to the idea of what was the basis of the Moon Village, a multi-partner open concept taking care of private and public activities on a destination, the destination Moon. But what are the space resources we are talking about? You saw that, uh, some of them already in the, in the movie, in the clip. There are resources of different type, for instance, on the Moon. Uh, we have the regolith, we have water, we have some minerals. So all of this is nice, but what to do? We saw it, we can build shelter, we can build also technical installations like an observatory. Um, and as a civil engineer, of course, this is very close to my heart. But it's also using water for astronauts, for irrigation, to, to get, to get uh, uh, oxygen and hydrogen also for uh, propulsion. And there's also the possibility of recycling of resources. You know the movie The Martian, and uh, he was using at that time parts of the Pathfinder uh, mission uh, for his uh, way to survive. And this, we have also these parts in, uh, on the moon. We have, for instance, uh, Survey, uh, Survey uh, 3, which was visited by uh, Apollo 12, and uh, they brought back some parts of Survey uh, 3, and there are a lot of things. So we have all these cars of the Apollo astronauts on the surface, and whenever there was somebody Landing on the moon, the, some stuff remained over there, not only Apollo, but also from other countries. Uh, the Lunokhod is still, st still there and so. So there are a lot of things which can be recycled, which can be used um, on the surface of the moon. But we also have um, uh, resources in space. Um, old satellites, like for instance Envisat, a, a very big satellite of uh, either size of an omnibus, and there is still a lot of technology in it which can be reused. The car of Elon Musk is flying around. Uh, don't, uh, don't forget that about. And maybe also asteroids can be used in the future for getting some resources and use some resources um, in space. So therefore, I don't see that we will bring back the resources uh, to Earth at the first moment, but to use it over there for special purposes. And there will be more like that also for recycling. If you think about mega constellations, there will be many satellites which will after operations be in space and can be used and uh, either refueled or recycled. So there is plenty of resources available. Therefore, it's time to take care of it, to take care of uh, different possibilities of production, of uh, recycling, and congratulations to the launch of ESRIC. And again, as I said at the beginning, we want to power ESRIC. Thank you very much. And I'm very uh, happy that I can sign the understanding, the memorandum of understanding and the implementation today. Thank you very much, Jan. And now to that legal part, Jan is going to stay on the line. I'd like to invite back to the stage Minister Fayo, and this is for the implementing arrangement between LSA, ISA and LIST. Uh, he will sign the agreement alongside Jan Werner, and because we're in COVID times, we have to do this one by one. So first of all, Jan Werner and Minister Fayo will sign the agreement. Okay, I have in front of me three. So I will sign three times uh, so that it's really a fixed uh, a solution. So I sign the first one and the second one and even the third one. This should be a sustainable 
<laughs> a signature for the future. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Jan. I'd uh, next like to invite Jan Lenners, Chairman of the Board of Directors for LIST, the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology, to sign. These are, of course, the three strategic partners of ESTRIC, and uh, the signatures are formalizing the cooperation. And finally, to invite to the stage the CEO of LIST, Thomas Calstinius. And then to invite back to the stage both of our ministers and Jack Lenners, because we will then have a photo on stage with Jan residing at the top there online. <laughs> and so just a line here for the, for the formal photograph with the, uh, the ministers and also uh, Jack Lenners. If you could be symmetrical around Jan, that's a good idea. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Oops. Thank you very much, and Thomas will remain on stage. Jan, thank <laughs> Jan, thank you very much for your time, and hopefully we'll see you back in Luxembourg very, very soon. It's notable that you're sitting with a hurricane behind you. I wondered if there was any reason for that. <laughs> a There's, always storm. There's always storm in space, and therefore we are trying to be agile and flexible. <laughs> Always. Thank you very much for your time, and perhaps you'll remain online. And I'm quite sure with the involvement of ESA in this corporation, we'll see you here when travel arrangements become a little bit more fluid. Inviting back onto the stage now, I'd like to invite Matthias Link. He is the interim director of ESRIC, the director of spaceresources.lu at LSA also. Matthias? And with him, <laughs> Mark Serres, who I'm sure you all know, who is the CEO of the Luxembourg Space Agency. Now, online, we're going to be joined by two people as well with high involvement in ESRIC. Firstly, please welcome Hans-Jörg Dietis, member of the executive board responsible for space research and technology at DLR, which is the German Aerospace Center. He's joining us from Bremen. And also, we're joined by Bernhard Hufenbach from ISA, lead of commercialization and the innovation team, directorate of human and robotic exploration, joining us from The Hague. Welcome to you both. Soon, ah, hello, welcome both. <laughs> now, just before our discussion, we had this morning a video sent to us by Mike Gold from NASA. My name is Mike Gold. I'm the Acting Associate Administrator for International Relations, and greetings from Luxembourg, or at least virtual Luxembourg. I'm sorry that I couldn't be with you all, but know that on this day, my spirit and heart are in Luxembourg, since I'm so excited and honored to be a part of launching the European Space Resources Innovation Center. Thank you to the Luxembourg Space Agency, ESA, and everyone who made this day possible. Like me, I'm sure that all of you look back on the Apollo program with great reverence and admiration. However, despite its historic achievements, the Apollo program did suffer from a non-trivial flaw, which is it ended. We are now in the midst of the Artemis program, 
with the goal of landing the first woman and the next man on the moon. For any endeavor that is the size and scope of Artemis, speed is critical. We need to execute these initial landings with alacrity in order to maintain political and financial support. However, of equal importance to speed, we must ensure that as NASA and our partners move forward to the moon, that we do so in a sustainable fashion, leading to a permanent human presence on the lunar surface. The ability to extract and utilize space resources is the key to achieving sustainability and permanence. Like all other explorers throughout history, we must learn to live off the land. This center will play a critical role in developing the technologies and policies that will enable a new era of robust and sustainable space exploration. We must first learn to leverage insight to resource utilization on the moon, and the experiences that we gain there will inform even more ambitious ISRU activities on Mars. In addition to developing new and innovative technologies to extract and utilize resources, we must also ensure that regulations and policies support and encourage such activities. I want to compliment Luxembourg for its trailblazing work on space resource policy. This center is yet another example of Luxembourg's leadership in the field of space resources, both within Europe and throughout the world. I was, of course, pleased and grateful for Luxembourg to join with the U.S. and six other nations to sign the Artemis Accords. The Accords will help to ensure that space resource extraction and utilization and all other Artemis-related operations are conducted in full compliance with the Outer Space Treaty, the Registration Convention, and other multilateral agreements. We are sending not only our astronauts to the moon, but our values of peace, transparency, and the free and open sharing of scientific data. Additionally, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the importance of space resources to safety. The ability to obtain vital water, oxygen, and even potentially fuel from the moon will help to bolster the safety of our astronauts. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that the work your center does will eventually save lives. Beyond sustainability and safety, space resources also represent a new and dynamic arena for commercial development. Two months ago, NASA announced a solicitation that is serving as a pilot program for the agency to purchase space resources from commercial companies. I believe selections will soon be made regarding the companies that will participate in this important and precedent exercise. And I look forward to working with this center on our commercial space resource purchase initiative and many other future NASA endeavors. Thank you again for your leadership on space resources. I know that space resources and the work of the center will provide the fuel that will not only propel humanity to the moon, Mars, and beyond, but will allow us to stay there, securing our future in the heavens. Thank you very much to Mike Gold for sending that video this morning. Now, turning to you, first of all, Matthias. Yes, masks are allowed to be off. I think we've measured distances between us. <laughs> and we can see mouths again, which is <laughs> a lovely thing. Um, firstly, why Esric? I believe you're the brainchild behind this. So how did the idea come about? Yeah, thank, thank you very much, uh, Lisa. I hope this works. Yeah, uh, yeah good morning to everyone. And uh, yeah, what a great day for Esric. Uh, it, it was about two years ago when we had the idea, it, it generated uh, between discussions between LSA and the directors of exploration, uh, Bernhard Hufenbach and, and his team. And I think at that time we uh, looked at the situation at the uh, national level, at the European level and the international level and we saw of course different things. On the national level in Luxembourg we had already launched the Space Resource Initiative uh, two years ago in 2016. And within that initiative, of course, we want to build a whole ecosystem dedicated to space resources. And we put in a special emphasis on international cooperation, on technology development, and also on business development. And uh, obviously this uh, we also discussed with ESA. On ESA side, I think we also looked at what happened in Europe. And while we had a lot of competencies, a lot of knowledge available in Europe, we saw that there was not enough consideration for this very important topic and then need that there needed to be more cooperation and also coordination among the different actors. And so the discussions went on with ESA. And then at the same time, we saw over the last years also what happened on the international level with more and more emphasis put on lunar exploration, exploration to Mars, and even asteroids, as Mike just mentioned. 
and we saw that the topic was definitely gaining more and more traction and moving fast. And we definitely saw it also together with ESA that we should make sure that Europe is also playing a role there in the longer term. And that's in the end how the idea of ESRIC was born. It was a, yeah, a tremendous challenge already the last two years to put everything in place. And of course, I would like to thank already today everyone involved at, uh, at ESA, of course, at LIST, and also at LSA in, in our team uh, to, to come to this point today. Thank you very much, Matthias. And for all of your hard work and dedication, I know it's a, it's a very, very big day for you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. And I'm going to turn directly then to Bernhard Hufenbach because, as Matthias mentioned, you were there, I think, for the first coffee chat with Matthias where this idea was born. So from that chat to today, a lot of hard work, a lot of conversations. Can you tell us why ESO wants to be a strategic partner, what your involvement will be and how this fits into your pillars at ESA? Certainly I can. Matthias already said a lot, but maybe I can recall some of the key milestones which led to today. I think 2016 was an important year. Luxembourg launched the initiative on space resources. But it was also in 2016 that ESA established the European Space Exploration Envelope Program, which did integrate all our exploration activities, human and robotic, targeting all destinations where human operate and will operate in the future, which is the lowest orbit, Moon and Mars. And it was based on these two milestones that uh, ESA and Luxembourg started discussion how we can uh, increase our cooperation. And I think in discussion between Matthias and myself, it became obvious if we really want to advance the topic of space resources, we would need to take a significant, uh, visible and visionary step. And that was how we came about the European Space Resource Innovation Center to really act as a global center of excellence and demonstrate really long-term commitment of Luxembourg, but also ESA to advance this topic, with a focus on really application-driven research. Then in 2019, at ESA, we finalized for the first time a strategy on space resources, which was a first. And then at the council meeting, end of the year of 2019, Luxembourg and ESA established a strategic partnership. Luxembourg became member of the European Space Exploration Envelope Program and we secured significant investment in ESA for starting our space resource initiative. Now that creates, I think, a really a strong basis for advancing our common work. And it was said multiple times, space resources are critical for making space exploration sustainable. Transportation costs are the driving factor in exploration. 50% of the costs for operating the ISS today, the International Space Station, are linked to transportation. If you ever operate an infrastructure on the moon, it's 70, 80, or even 90% of the cost. And I don't know a single human missions to Mars concept which doesn't rely on the use of space resources. So in other words, without the use of space ex uh, resources, we will not have a sustainable human space exploration program. Hence, the center is critical to the future of our program. Thank you very much, Bernhard, for that uh, very eloquent explanation of, of why it's so important and the costs involved of current space travel and research. Thomas, as CEO of LIST, can you tell us how um, ESRIC fits into the whole ethos for LIST and why it's being nurtured within LIST? Right, so um, ESRIC fits extremely well within LIST and we're very pleased to have ESRIC within LIST. It fits very well in the way we work and also in the what we actually do. Eh? Um, LIST is a research and technology organization, a research institute if you like, uh, and we work on open innovation. So we work with partners, academic partners, also industry partners, and, and ESRIC is also standing for open innovation. So in that sense, we're very used to this model of working. Eh? Uh, we are also incubating things. We're incubating ideas, we're incubating research, technologies, even people, and now an innovation center. So for us to take something like ESRIC into list and grow it, it's also something that is very much in line with our mission, and we're very pleased to have ESRIC as a new uh, department within list in this context. And it also fits very well in what we do, uh, because uh, like Minister Maish just emphasized, we have a lot of experience on the topics that uh, we're discussing here on, for example, materials research, which is a key topic for us, but also environmental research, informatics, it all comes very in handy when ESRIC is being built up. So we're very looking forward to support ESRIC and having it as a department within list. Thank you, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Now turning to Mark here, representing, of course, the Luxembourg Space Agency. How does ESRIC fit into the umbrella of the Luxembourg Space Agency? 
and also perhaps just explain out further what your objectives are moving forward for LSA. I believe when all these discussions have taken place, also with the European Space Agency, we always had in mind the objective that we have here in Luxembourg is to develop uh, the space sector from an economic point of view. And, uh, and from the start, we always have looked at it from the different dimensions of the ecosystem. That starts from education, goes through research, goes through innovation with industry, goes through financing and investment, as well as cooperation. And uh, I think all these elements, we have worked on it. And here, the research part is particularly important. I think this is something where we have helped already our research community here to develop on, let's say, the more traditional uh, uh, domains of, of space. But here, particularly for space resources, with the experience we gained also in our initiative, getting in touch with the research community, I think that became uh, a truly need to set up something that would really bring all these small teams that exist already, that was already a surprise to see that so many people were really working on that, on that topic. And so here, bringing, giving them an opportunity to work together, to federate in a certain sense all this community uh, and create this platform in Luxembourg, I think that was fitting very well in our global policy and uh, in, in the way we generally operate, also cooperating with others. This is what we do on national level. This is what we do on international level, also here involving ESA. And, uh, and so still keeping in mind that at the end, we want to have an economic benefit to it. And this is, I think, also why the name has Innovation Center in it. I think this is what we look for at the end. Thank you, Mark. Now, Hans-Jörg, we haven't heard from you yet. Thank you for joining us also. You're here representing DLR, the German Aerospace Center, which has a, a fantastic reputation. What is your interest in ESRIC? I'm muted. Hans-Jörg, yes. We, we yeah, yeah, I was on it. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate our partners in Luxembourg, but also in ESA for this uh, wonderful um, foundation of this new center, because um, it, it, um, it, it's entering a new era I mean, it, with respect to exploration on, on moon and maybe later on planets and asteroids. Uh, what we are doing now is um, um, we plan for real exploration. It means we, we not only land and collect some samples and bring them back and make research on spot. What we need are infrastructures in the future. What we need are um, lab, labs on site. And we have to use the in situ um, resources uh, to do our research, first on moon, maybe later on the Mars and so on. So I think um, uh, it's a great opportunity for us as one of the largest uh, research center in space in Europe. Um, to enter this and work together with our partners in Luxembourg, with ESA. And we do it a long time, it's not new. But within this um, center, we have a lot of new opportunities to work together um, and develop technology more than uh, doing only research here. And this is what we um, think is uh, very, very good to do at the moment for this new era of exploration. Thank you, Hans-Jürgen. I'm going to turn to you again, Matthias, because now that we've got this launch, it's launched, we've got a website, the social media links, <laughs> but the next stage of hard work now begins for you and all of the strategic partners here present as well. So I know you may already be a little bit tired and you're the interim director, but what are the next steps? How, when it comes to space, we have to think about budgets and long-term investment and time works in perhaps a different way, but what have you got planned for, let's say, the next year? Yeah, thanks, Lisa. So, indeed, it's very hard to predict on the long term. Space resources is a very complex topic, and many challenges need to be solved on the international level, legal level, technology level, business level, economics, finance. So there are a lot of different things, and, of course, uh, we have to start somewhere. Uh, what is nice, I think, with ESRIC is that we have now very strong partners to start with. We also have a clear plan uh, and a budget to 
realize this plan in the next three years, and that is actually very concrete. And I think that's with what we will start. So we will now very quickly set up first research teams, in particular parts of the space resource value chain, going from prospection, extraction, to utilization and supplying space resource-based products. And so we'll start re uh, to put in place research activities right now. Uh, then uh, next year, we'll have another big milestone when we will launch the incubator that is part of ESRIC uh, to support startups in this domain. At the same time, of course, we will also look to additional partners. We talk with DLR, we have other, other talks as well with other space agencies and other public institutions and also industries. And of course, all together, we will try then to uh, push this forward and to make ESRIC a success. Thank you, Matthias. Thomas, you are another one of these strategic partners, and you'll be there at the, at the forefront of trying to find all of these people. So please, today is your chance to call out for those people you want to come into the Innovation <laughs> Center and to be part of this team. You've got the three-year plan in place. Who do you want to come on board? Who are you looking for? If I was a young PhD student, I would immediately apply for ethic. I mean, this is a fantastic opportunity in the, uh, at a speci very specific moment in time as well. Huh? To join a team being built up in an innovation ecosystem, which I think is tremendous. Huh? Uh, also, you know, coming to Luxembourg two years ago, I think what we see in this country is that we move very, very fast here. Uh, we and the, the reason why we can move so fast is because we collaborate, you know, academia, uh, with the political environment, the business environment, and also the legal environment. I mean, we, we have very short decision paths in this country. Yeah? And, and this is why it's so fun, to, honestly, to make do innovation and research in this country, because here you can really make a difference. So I can just recommend anyone with an interest in research, generally speaking, and space research, of course, to join us. Uh, this is a fantastic opportunity. And does LIST already have a background in space research? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah we do lots of space research. Uh, actually, we, we work, of course, on the material science, uh, because we work on different types of materials which are being used in, the, in space. Also in environmental sciences, we look at things like remote sensing with satellites, and that's something we also collaborate with our partners, University of Luxembourg, for example, and also on the ICT part of it. So we, we have a lot of experience with, uh, with space research, generally speaking, uh, and they can be applied and support now in the build-up of ESRIC. So it's not a completely new topic for us, but of course we channel a lot of our, let's say, in, uh, competences now to make it happen for ESRIC. Yeah. Something I also want to just mention is that we always look to space research uh, with a, let's say, dual-use perspective. Uh, space research is pushing the boundaries. I mean, space is extreme, uh, and that means that what we come up with in space is something that can often be used back on Earth. Uh, and we, I think it's important to keep that in mind historically that a lot of innovation, you know, solar cells, light-emitting diets, even insulin pumps, water purification, it comes from a lot of space research, and it has its immediate use here on Earth. And we always look for this dual use in this. Uh, so even though that this has a long-term perspective, the, the application can actually be short to mid-term, and that's something we also want to emphasize within this. So more business opportunities, not just for space, but along the way, we might get some terrestrial use out of this as well. Yeah, our, our mission is to push the frontier in research, and space is really pushing the frontiers in research, but the applications can be more short to midterm as well. So. Thank you. Bernhard, how do you view your strategic role then as a partner within ESRIC? Well, I think ESA has a very clear plans how we can contribute to building and operating ESRIC. In the first instance, we are focusing on developing some state-of-the-art research facilities to optimize the process for extracting oxygen from regolith. We have already a lot about the value of oxygen. And we will deploy these facilities at Asterix. They will be hosted there. And then we will also fund comprehensive research programs being conducted at Asterix. Uh, we will also, from ESA, su support and provide support for the business incubation function and the technology transfer based on the expensive, extensive experience, not expensive, expensive <laughs> experience. Expensive and expensive. <laughs> applications. And of course, in the, in the longer run, I think the role of ESA is very clear. We need to make sure that all the knowledge and technology we develop at ESRIC actually we will apply in future ESA missions funded through the European Space Exploration Envelope Program. And that should hopefully lead to European industry playing a key role in the emerging lunar economy uh, we see, of which we see first signs appearing also in particular through the strong commercialization efforts in the United States. 
Well, on that uh, economic point, I'm turning to you, Mark, uh, because for the Luxembourg Space Agency, it's grown so fast in recent years, and it's really made a mark for itself on the global stage. So congratulations to all of the, the ministries involved and, of course, to the Luxembourg Space Agency. Do you feel it can become one of the real strong vertical industry pillars of Luxembourg, such as the financial sector has become? That's at least our hope, uh, Lisa. I, uh, I think the, um, the effort that is pursued by the government to, to give more uh, feed to the economy over the last uh, more than 20 years, I think this is um, the, the, the driver for us. And uh, we definitely have here as an objective to do it with this perspective, really grow this part of the economy and create a value, uh, uh, um, an added value for the economy in terms of GDP, in terms of uh, number of employments, uh, and uh, in terms of number of activities. I think it's important also to have this diversity. And, uh, and I believe at least we see a very po positive trend for the moment. For those who follow a little bit our, um, uh, our advancement, we have issued now in, in June our last version or edition of the Space Directory, which brings together or lists the, the different players in Luxembourg. Uh, and, and we have reached now more than 50 companies in Luxembourg, which is a, a really high number for the size of the country. And, uh, and we can't see the trend changing for the moment. So, so this is... This is fantastic. I think uh, uh, the, the support the agency has received over the, the last years by, by the government, I think this, this political engagement is really uh, drawing the fruits. Um, uh, I, I'm very optimistic that in the next uh, three to five years we will see significant increase of the added value in this sector in Luxembourg. And, uh, and definitely initiatives like space resources in particular here at ESRIC is a very important building block to do that uh, from different perspectives. It's important also to have the right skills in, in Luxembourg and having institutions like that, of course, uh, contribute to that as well. Um, and, and so um, that's, that's, how should I say, a sort of puzzle that we are putting together uh, in terms of different initiatives and elements that we need, the ingredients of a receipt, so that we can, at the end, really have a successful economic sector in Luxembourg. Thank you, Mark. Hans, you're turning to you and listening to what Mark has just said. You have a, a very large knowledge of many things I discovered yesterday, but let's just focus on space. Uh, what do you feel would be DLR's role. Why is Luxembourg and Estric of interest to you? And thinking about those paths that Mark wants to see flourish, what skills need to be trained up? So I've given you lots of questions there, so you can dig into any of them. Yeah, we talked about um, the new era, and we said what, what, what has to be changed. I mean, first of all, it needs entrepreneurs. It needs, um, I mean, it's a brave undertaking to say it. We go on moon. We go on, on, on far distant planets and look for, at the end, for business. Uh, this is not as easy. And it needs uh, brave people to do it. And um, th the other way, the other question is, what kind of strategy do we have to follow? I mean, um, it's different from what we did in the past. We have to fly to these far distant goals and look for resources and look for things we can bring to Earth or we can use that it uses us on Earth in many, many different ways. And the, what, what we like to do in DLR is um, to help uh, by technology development. Let's, let's imagine we would land on Earth and we have never visited Earth before. And the first question is where to land. We would try to avoid to land where our forests because uh, not easy to land there. At the end, maybe we would decide to land somewhere in the desert. Flat, it's more or less soft, there's sand, you can land. But then we would stay there, build up a small village, live there, stay there for years and years, and after a while, we would know a little bit around this village, but no more. 
But Earth, as we know, as we live on Earth, is much more than a desert. So the question is how we can see all this variety on Earth, but just one landing point, it's not possible. So what we need are um, rovers. They go far distant ways. They go faster than the rovers we have at the present. Yeah? If it's, it, just to give you an example, if you, if you land on the moon and, and, and run a robot, uh, a, a rover, uh, we have velocities of um, maybe meters per day. That's much too small, the velocity to explore. So what we need are machines, autonomous systems. They can operate um, completely alone and go far distant ways to explore the terra incognita. This, this terra incognita is the, pro the problem. Whenever we land somewhere, there are a lot of surprises we have to expect. And um, this is what we like to do. We like to go into road development, machine development, where we can explore these big, big bodies. A moon is a big body. And um, where we can um, see uh, and um, explore the resources much better than in the past. And I think this is what we have to do. And this is what it needs the brave um, people to do it, the, the, the industry to help us. and. Um, uh, uh, also the, the technicians and the people well educated, very well educated, uh, they can bring in the ideas for this future undertaking. Well, thank you very much, Hans Jörg, to, to think about how we can track and map the moon's surface, the terra incognita. And so just moving off that point then, Matthias, really the very next step, who are you looking for to come on board? And you too, Thomas, and, and perhaps Bernhard, I'm looking at the three strategic partners here now, so dive in and tell us, you know, in the next six months, you are the interim director, who do you want to come on board after this launch today to join you, to be able to build these rovers, autonomous rovers that can map the moon's surface? Before we get to the stage of the lawyers and the various other business developments, what's the next six month stage for you? Well, very concretely, it's of course building the first team. <laughs> For the moment, ASRIC is very, very small. As you can imagine, we're just launching it. Of course, we interact with a lot of people. And again, I really want to thank all these people at, at LIST, at ESA, at LSA, and all the others uh, for their dedication to this project. And I think we already went far. Of course, now we went, need to go to the next step. And we, will, uh, we are currently finalizing the first job positions. We'll be able to publish them hopefully next week. Mm -hmm already to establish the first teams. And then, of course, we have already a lot. We have a lot, as uh, Thomas said, as list. We have a lot at ESA. I think, Bernard, maybe you can say a bit more about that in terms of what's going, already, uh, what's going on already in terms of special procurements for ESRIC. And I, th I think the next six months is, of course, this. We need to put all this together at list and, and start building it for real. Uh, at the same time, I mentioned it already, uh, we are also in the final stages of uh, setting up the incubator. We expect the, the first call for startups to go out in uh, Q, Q1, Q2 next year. So, of course, uh, this is also a call for interested startups to get involved. And, uh, yeah, maybe it's also good to mention that next year in April, we will organize the second Space Resource Week, which uh, is a big event for us that we al already organized last year for the first one, actually in this room, uh, but with 500 persons in the room, not with uh, just uh, 50. Uh, so I hope we'll, we, we can repeat this experience uh, in, in April next year and bring really the whole community again to Luxembourg as much as possible physically and uh, keep the, ro the ball rolling. Well, uh, can I, can I yes, please. please. Uh, generally speaking, I think we are looking for enthusiasts and believers in this because th this is a very bold in endeavor we're going to. Huh? And uh, we, we have many types of jobs, you know, researchers, incubation, outreach, and so on. But people need to believe in space and they need to go with us because this will be a bit of a bumpy road, we know. Huh? We don't, you know like we said, we don't know exactly what we will find out. And we have to solve certain problems while we're on the go. Eh? But so we need those believers who can join us and build up ethic on research, on incubation, on business outreach, on communication, all of this. But fundamentally, we are one team who wants to make this happen, and that's what we are actually looking for. And Bernhard, uh, for all of you, really, the, the, the three strategic partners, where will these jobs for the procurement be available to look at? On the ethic side? Of course. 
Isa, will Isa have it as well? Yes, but on our standard procurement side, it's called the Emmets platform. And so list. It's visible for all you've been in the street. So for any people watching online or in the room, if you want a huge change of career, <laughs> don't know, Minister Manish, if you want a, a complete change of career, <laughs> it's, a, it's a tricky time at the moment to be a minister, I'm quite sure of it. But no, for anybody interested online, we will have those on the, on the websites of all parties involved and of course the Esterick site as well. A final word, a, a short final word from you all. Mark, starting with you, just a final word about today, about the launch or about space and General, to kind of really motivate, like you said, we need to have the believers. So the final word, what would you like to say to our audience today? Well, that, that's a really exciting moment. I think uh, when we started this initiative in 2016, in fact, we were working on it since longer time, but that was um, a sort of extremely inspiring thematic that uh, was motivating us a lot to continue developing this sector more in general. And uh, we have seen now over the, the years all these building blocks coming one after the other. And ESRIC is one more. And I can tell you we have others in the pipeline for next year. So uh, I think this remains exciting. And I believe we, s we will continue to be excited for the, the next years. Matthias, as the interim director, what would you like to say to our I audience? I would just uh, say again, uh, a big thanks to everyone. I would say the adventure continues, and I would say join us and uh, let's make it happen. <laughs> a very good Luxembourg line there. Mm. <laughs> Thomas. Yeah, the, the, the journey has started, uh, and let's go far, eh? and let's go together. And now I'm going to turn to our, our wonderful guests on screen, Bernhard. Well, I think there are two things to say. Today is a great day for celebration, but the work starts now, so we need to start becoming concrete and active. And secondly, space resource is a topic that is too big for space agencies. Just to give you an idea, ESA invests in the next two, three years, maybe tens of million, the years after, maybe more than 100 million and hundreds of million. Sounds a lot, but it's far not enough to really advance the topic of space resources. We need more private sector and institutional investment to make that a success. So we're looking for everybody to join us for its knowledge, competence, but also for additional investment to really move this topic forward in Europe. And Hans-Jörg, the final word to you. <laughs> yeah, first of all, I wish um, Essek all the best for the future. And I hope that uh, they can celebrate the 25th anniversary also in a, in a virtual format, but people are not sitting in offices in Bremen or in The Hague or in Paris but sitting on the deck of the moon. <laughs> well, that's, that's a lo lovely final thought, and I'm sure that Jan Werner would be delighted to have a come on with you up there. And indeed, normally we would be able to talk to one another and have a coffee or so and chat in person, but we can't at the moment for very clear reasons. Nonetheless, it's been a great pleasure to be able to talk to people in the room, to have you here on the stage. Thank you both for joining us online, and I'm quite sure we will see you physically in Luxembourg in the not too distant future. Thank you to all of our viewers who have joined the live stream as well. Since we're not able to network in real life so easily these days, please do log on to the website, get in touch with Estric, get in touch via social media links. It's all live. And as everybody here has demonstrated and said repeatedly, and it's absolutely true that Luxembourg is a very kind place and things do happen and they happen quite quickly. So it's a fantastic opportunity for anybody interested in all sorts of ways to get involved. My thanks to you all, particularly the ministers and the ambassadors for, for giving us your very precious time at the moment and good luck with all of the work you have on your plates at the moment. And my final thanks to the team of ESRIC and the Luxembourg Space Agency of ESA and of LIST who have made this happen today. And good luck to our interim director, Matthias. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you.